Nintendo, you want, pop, you want, you want, rock and roll. You want it? This year's remix got some phonics. So I got hot, I got, Damn. I got, rockin' electronic. electronic. Beats, I got your pop music. Ooh, yeah. Welcome, welcome. Mm. I think we're in the groove of getting this done earlier in the week, so. So I think this is working out well because just with the racing over the weekend, we can report on that and yeah, yeah, we're a lot better than doing it at the end of the week and post in the beginning. So most of the information is still pretty relevant. Yeah, it makes uh, it just makes it nicer as far as getting getting the updates and getting information out there because then people are getting the current OR information from yeah. last week. The week after instead uh -huh. of a week, a week and before, because we know yeah. everyone else is reporting on it early. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> but still, you know, I yeah. just think we're getting the information out there a little bit more timely. Yeah. So. Agreed. Mm -hmm. So hopefully it's a little more exciting this way. Uh, but I guess, you know, we don't have a ton of like big new yeah. stuff i don't know no, no verratas to show yeah no, well there are some cool things to show but uh, yeah even just seeing stuff like in, we haven't met with any reps so we don't haven't got any real new information yeah. for what's coming out in six months yep. but we did get s some cool new product yep um, um let's start yeah. off real quick uh new magazines new competitor magazine uh i had a lady come in and mm -hmm. uh, her husband was excited because it has your ultimate 2013 yeah. race guide. And that's kind of nationwide. New sports guide, yeah. which is more uh, your local. Um, it's kind of like a mix between a magazine and a newspaper, which is pretty pretty cool, I think. Um, and Reebok, we're going to be getting Reebok uh, CrossFit shoes in. Yeah, and the Nano. I'm actually which, really excited about that. They like, look cool. Like if yeah. you take a look at it, just a picture on it doesn't do it justice. Yeah. But looking at it, it really has some of those ultra esque features you know wider toe box it's really low heel to toe i think it's four millimeter drop yeah but they look really really good um obviously it's got some characteristics that would make me question whether or not it's going to be ideal for running but it's still pretty light low to the ground and you know why not even if it's just tailored, it looks like a good shoe. So I'm, yeah. I'm excited. I I just wouldn't have expected that from Reebok because yeah. we've kind of been let down by Reebok for a while. Yep, and I think maybe the United States of America was let down by Reebok. <laughs> yeah, well, it was weird because they were still sponsoring professional athletes, like two, three years ago. Yeah, uh, like the Torres twins, Jorge oh, yeah. Yeah. and Eduardo Torres. They were Reebok athletes, um, and I just was always wondering what. What are they running? What are they in? training in? What yeah. are they training? <laughs> but now they're, I guess, Reebok's owned by Adidas. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, Adidas huh. bought them out, so it's still a name, but it's under the Adidas umbrella. Kind of like Hurley and Converse with yeah. uh, Nike and cool. yeah, or like in the trail world, Columbia owns Montreal. Oh yeah. So. Um, and then we've uh, actually this is some of the most exciting stuff that I've seen from Asics, Asics in yeah. a while. We've got the gel Nusa Fast for women's, the gel Nusa Fast for men's, and then the gel Blazing Fast, mm -hmm. um, which is kind of like reminds me of the universe. Reminds me it's, of the, the Piranha. It's I think it's replacing, replacing the Piranha. The piranha. Uh -huh. yeah. Which, I love the Piranha. Piranha is a too. sweet shoe. Yeah. This looks like, I actually haven't put it on yet, but it's it's light. It's in that 3-4 ounce category. Yeah. Uh, it looks good. Yeah, it really does. It looks I haven't tried it on yet. I've tried, the, I've tried the Noosa, the Noosa Fast, yeah. which I thought the Noosa Fast was going to be kind of like the Racer ST7 by Brooks mm -hmm. or the... Um, the K, the K Roos by, uh, um, and it's in that category. I think this one's actually replacing the Ryan Hall Hyperspeed. Oh, interesting. So, so yeah, so I thought it was gonna have a stability posting on the inside, no, but it's, no, it's completely neutral. neutral. Yeah, the so, Nusa Tri has that stability posting, but right. But and design wise, fit wise, yeah. weight wise, 
I like ramp it. wise, I like, I like it's it. not what you would expect from Asics. Yeah. Which I think Asics has been having a hard time, but this gives me a little bit of hope. Yeah. It, it's a pretty cool shoe. Yeah. Like there's, I, there's a glimmer. you said, most exciting thing we've seen from Asics in yeah. a while. I mean, the 33 series, would yeah, maybe, even the, maybe on paper, the light 33 exciting. was a disappointment. Yep. To be quite frank, I yep. was not impressed. I mean, just when when it first was kind of released and before it's we like, got to try the product, drop. Uh, it this was is cool. awesome. But, uh, but as far as c customer feedback and yeah, the fit was the not fit, right. Yeah, it's not not cool. We also have some new Brooks product that we got in. Uh -huh. The Ravenna. Ravenna four. And for our and stability shoe, the Ravenna's always been it's been a solid shoe for us. I know nationwide it's like been in the top ten since it's been released. I even think it might be in the top t five selling uh, running shoes in America oh, really? for run specialty. Oh. So this is a pretty big shoe. It's not the biggest for us. We've done pretty well with the Ravenna. Yeah. Um, it's a solid, yeah. light stability shoe. I think. I think the color updates are good. Yep. I think it looks better than the last one. But. And it's it's one that I, if someone falls into that light stability category, mm. I'll always bring it out oh, because yeah. it's just a solid, good feeling Brooks shoe. So. Uh -huh. um, and I think, oh, and a little shout out to the event that we're having one week from oh, yeah. today. Uh, I think the video will the be 12th, posted let's today. See. Yeah. It'll be it'll be February twelfth, uh, the Abe Lincoln Beard Run. You can see mm -hmm. that I'm working on growing my facial hair, which I go I, to BYU. I am honor bound not to grow a <laughs> beard. And I am I am free <laughs> from those rules for the time being. Um, but it's it's a uh, it's the Abe Lincoln Beard Run Relay and Beard Contest. Uh, look up Sojourners Running Club on Facebook and you'll be able to get some more information on that. That's all I'll say. It's going to be a sweet event. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know of anybody in the world that's doing an event like that. We're, we yeah, are the first. Be the first we one. are the first. I know. Possibly. Very innovative. Exciting. Um, so last video, Danny answered the question of if he what he thought the biggest piece of biomechanical advice he would give what would it be and he talked about foot strike and mm -hmm. I think that there I think there is a case for foot strike and I think that it is extremely important I think just as important as foot strike in my opinion is cadence um, in my opinion when you have good cadence it brings the foot back and depending on the speed that you're running at if you're kind of a slower runner that's great um, if you're faster that's great too but if you're kind of a slower runner, you may not hit quite as high up on the foot as maybe a faster runner. And so you may hit a little bit closer to the heel, maybe not a complete heel strike, maybe more of a flat foot strike. Whereas somebody who's running really fast may have a really prominent forefoot strike. But cadence is going to be one of the, one of the biggest things in my opinion, coupled with foot strike. I think it is part of the equation. Um, and a good way to work on cadence. Ideally, you want 180 steps a minute. And we could go into more detail on uh, why 180 is a good rule of thumb. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily the magic number or the number that everybody should be running at, but it's a really good rule of thumb. It'll help a lot of runners. Um, but you can come into the store and ask us about 180. But uh, a couple uh, tips on ways that you can implement the 180 is download a metronome app. For the phone, Pro Metronome is a really good metronome app. It's free. Set it at 180 beats per minute and then hit every time you hear the beat. You can download some podcasts, Pod Runner and Runner Tracks. Both have, uh, both have podcasts at 180 beats a minute. Uh, also, you can Google songs at 180 beats per minute or songs at 90 beats a minute and only do one foot. So you would do t -t 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 like that and do 90 beats a minute. So... Uh, all those are pretty good suggestions for that as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's interesting. I don't really ever, I rarely physically work on cadence, but yeah. talking to Grant Robison, who used to be the New Balance run ambassador, because oh. um, New Balance made a pretty big push on teaching running form um, okay. with their Minimus line. Got it. And he agrees with you. He made the statement that he thinks cadence is the most important thing someone can work on. Huh. And it was interesting, about a year ago, even 
Ed Eyestone, who writes for Runner's World, he wrote an article on the 180 cadence. Oh, interesting. Um, and he gave some ideas, you know, kind of taking it more of an interval twist mm -hmm. where, and uh, you might even call it more of a fartlet because you're doing it time-based where you're just working like one minute trying to really hone in on focusing on the, ah, the 180 cadence and don't idea. worry about it. Two minutes, focus on it, then two minutes rest, three minutes, focus on it. Yeah. And so he gave that idea. He also threw out the... Because really the only way to, to accomplish it, you've got to practice it. Yep. With running form, that's the key. There's a really big disconnect in a lot of people understanding what and how to run and actually doing it. Yep. They're two completely different things. Yep. And so that's why getting videotaped and having someone watch you run and huge. it's really huge. Yep. The cadence is actually nice because you don't have to actually watch, you just have to kind of focus and count yep. and you can do and it. It's, and, it's, and it's pretty nice because it's quantifiable yeah. as far as where, when somebody says, okay, do a good foot strike. It's like, okay, well, what is that? And mm -hmm. am I doing that? And yeah. so it's, and it's Grant Robinson's point and Grant, he was an Olympian back in Athens, I think for the okay. mile. And his point was exactly what you you were saying. When your cadence is that quick, your the other aspects of form usually fall into place. Yeah. So like the posture, foot strike, posture. And the arm swing. So you kind of have to be doing some things right if you're going to get that kind of cadence. Yeah. So I agree with that. Cool. Um, let's talk uh, racing. Oh, what was I going to say? Oh, uh, a, a plug along with that. Um, our next running class, our Learn to Run class, is on February 21st. It's a Thursday, 6 o'clock. We'll do some video analysis, some lecture, and uh, it's one of my favorite things to teach. So mm -hmm. um, we'll see you there. Cool, cool. Racing. Yeah, we got some racing news now. And I don't know, this is a pretty big racing week uh, nationwide. Once again, our she seems to make our show every week, but Mary yeah. Kane was at it again, this time breaking the indoor two mile record. Tell us tell us what the time was and how much she broke the record. 9.38, and wow. I think the last record was 48. Okay. I'm not sure, I can't remember. But it was a pretty big, she smashed it. Cool. Uh, and remember, this girl's only a junior, so 9.38, that was a professional meet. Given she got her butt kicked by Tarunish Baba. But if you're gonna get your butt kicked, you're probably gonna get your butt kicked by Tiru, who ran a 9:13 in that race. But you know, Tiru is like the best of the best, like, literally. She is. She is the Haile Gebre Selassie and the and the Kenanisa Bekele of, of the women. Yeah, right? she's got a lot of gold. Yeah. But uh, but so you know, just show goes to show Mary Kane's got some work, but heading in the right direction. She was in that race with Tiru. You know, you can't cool. have better competition. That's awesome. So that's really that's very encouraging for U.S. women's running. Even though U.S. women's running has has come a long way yeah. and it's doing really well, oh, it's yeah. just very encouraging to see a high school girl running that kind. Of yeah, it really is. And it's fun, even just with the Olympics, that we got we got medals at distance events. Yeah. you know, which hasn't been always been the case. Um, but other news would be the cross country nationals okay. with Chris Derrick, who finally got a national championship. He was of that group that was just loaded: German Fernandez, yep. Colby Lowe, um, Sam Chalanga, Sam Chalanga, uh, Cam Levins, and yep. he never was Luke Piscedra. All yep. those guys, he was never able to get a national championship. While Even in though college. he's dang fast, yeah. really good. He ran like a 13.24 his freshman year um, on the track. So really, really sick stuff. But he won cross-country nationals, beating out Matt Tegenkamp okay. and Ritzenheim. Oh, I didn't realize he so that's, those, are, well. those are big scalps to get. Wow. Um, Shalane Flanagan won the women's, cool. which isn't too surprising. Uh, who, uh, do you know who was, who was right behind Flanagan? Kim Conley. Okay. Who was an Olympian? Yeah. Um, so, cool. But cool stuff. It's yeah. good to see people racing cross country. Sometimes yeah. a lot of people skip it for the higher paid track events. Yep. Um, seems like a lot. Sometimes people just don't care about cross country because it's not really in the spotlight. They don't yeah. get any television coverage. Um, but should we're all about. Should it. I know it really should that change. Should, that should change. If you are in charge of that, change that. Um. 
Yeah, other let's news. Talk local Utah Olympic Oval. Yeah, big Amazing. big local um, results just this last weekend. Most no- noteworthy to me was first sub five in the state, Serafini, okay. um, in the mile, which you know I think she broke five last year, okay. but she runs for Ogden. And four, this four, early. Four fifty seven, is yeah, that what you said? Four fifty seven. Okay. Really solid time. Cool. Uh, our employee Summer was in that race, yeah. ran a five oh five. Which is like she said a fourteen second PR. PR. She ran five flat last year. Um Altitude conversion for, for outdoors, I think. Yeah, for outdoors. Okay. So in a really good spot. And then the two mile Ben Sorrell ran a nine ten, which is wow. and he took he's coming off I think it was fourth place at Foot Locker Nationals. Okay. So that guy is in shape right cool. now. Cool. And there's Ciao, a, Ben. Yeah. And I guess the other thing I just want to give a shout out to Derek who returned to the track after Derek Moody for yeah, those my brother, brother who is. ran a five a fifteen twenty eight that's with altitude conversion. Um, yeah. <laughs> but you know, running sub sixteen indoors yeah. in a collegiate meet. You know, good for him for getting out there. Uh, we have some local racing coming up yeah. that we will be able to report on in the next weeks. Uh, but I think unless you got anything, no, I think that's it. Wow, that was yeah. fast. Enjoy. Cool. Have a good week. I know this world has